Welcome back YouTube. This is Sam from the SOB channel. Recently I just returned from central Utah and Moab area. Uh-oh. While others are showing you new shots of their shiny new bikes from their garage, I'm not about that. Let's take this thing out and see its potential. It didn't like that. It's all good. So hands down, my favorite thing about the new 2023 300XC is the motor. It's not just that this is a powerful motor, it's the way that this motor delivers that power. Key to riding technical terrain, in fact any terrain really, is traction. And this motor allows for precise inputs of traction to the ground. The problem with two strokes, especially powerful two strokes, is it becomes so easy to break the traction on the rear wheel. However, this motor allows for exact and precise power placement, which makes it so fun. It's terrifying to watch every time. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Oh my I don't need to do it. I get scared enough just watching it. <laughs> that was from some shenanigans on high dive. I now want to roll in some clips we did of a climb on the first day. As I mentioned in my prior video, I have owned five TPI bikes and currently own two 300 TPI bikes and have put hundreds of hours on the TPI motor. So I feel like I have a good feel for what the TPI motor feels like. As I also mentioned in my prior video, I'm amazed at how the power of the stock TBI has rivaled the power of my TPIs with high compression heads and tunes. <laughs> a lot of the soft stuff's down now. Here's a shot of Byron on his Sherco 300. Oh, give her the beans. Followed by my friend Jeff on his 500 XCFW. Are you doing third to second or what? Just third all the way. Followed by McKay on a YZ something or other. Not quite sure what he was riding. Getting loose. Yeah. Getting ate up. It, it really kind of sucks the speed out of you with the. Uh, the first half of the hill. I had already climbed the hill several times, but each consecutive time the hill would change. Particularly the bottom part would get softer and softer with more dirt down. This is a third gear, followed to a shift to second gear. Here's the same hill and another climb. Later in the day, I let Brett ride the bike for the very first time, and here was his reaction. What, what a different animal. Isn't that something? Like, every half second, I'm like, gonna cut out, gonna cut out, gonna cut out. Did That was impressive. It just kept pulling. It's fair to mention that I had plenty of climbs that I didn't make the top on. Here's one where I fold the rear fender back. Good test for the rear fender, it held on. Damn it! 
I was pissed because I didn't make it to the top, not the rear fender being folded. But when we did these hill climbs, the power of the new TBI was very evident. Here's another line on a different part of the mountain. Didn't make this one on the initial run. So I decided to park it, enjoy the sunset, watch some climbs. Most of the riding I did over this weekend was all done on the green map, which is the more aggressive map. I switched between the two maps, but because this power is so controllable and tractable, I find that I could ride it in the more aggressive map, even on the most technical stuff. I want to switch to a little bit more technical terrain here in Moab. The video isn't going to do a very good job of showing this, but this upcoming section here, the TBI bike is able to loft the wheel and hold the wheel up better than the TPI bike would. And it's not just lifting the wheel, it's the ability for it to just grab traction and to hold the power exactly where you want. Sometimes with the TPI models I would feel that the motor would be a little sluggish and then would rev out quickly. Here I'm coming to a spot where I'm going to do a downhill drop. The problem is with this drop is there's loose dirt on top of the rock and on a downhill drop you have to really get that front end up so it's easy to put too much uh, throttle to the rear wheel and spin it, lose traction, not lift the front wheel and fall off the drop. And I feel that this bike does just such a good job of putting down accurate usable power. Looking back nobody else is quite sure they want to commit to that kind of a risk. For sure. You may have also noticed that the map switch was still on the yeah. green map while doing that. I also noticed several situations in which I would have had to shift down if I was riding one of my TPI bikes, but this bike was able to carry the gear and I didn't have to shift down. Another difference on this bike that I quite like is the gearing. I've noticed that the bike is geared differently than the previous two XC's that I owned. I am typically a fan of the XCW bikes because of the low gearing and that they suit my kind of riding better. This bike, however, the first and second gears seem to be lower and they're really where I like them to be. I have, however, added one larger tooth on this bike, so I'm running a 50 rear on the rear sprocket versus the 49. But for me, the gearing on this bike is really good. Come off. It's now time in my review to rant about my fellow human beings. I think that most 4x4 and Jeep enthusiasts would consider Moab to be somewhat the pinnacle of possibly their sport and somewhat extreme but if you can have a full-on meal not just a snack but a full-on meal while doing your obstacle it really kind of takes the extreme out of it regarding the suspension on this bike my opinion is different from most I'm surprised at how good the suspension actually is It's been said that this suspension can't go straight through rocks and that it bounces all over the place and it needs to be modified. I just don't understand that. <laughs> it sounds like it's coming from someone that's willing to sell you suspension parts and upgrades. And indeed they are. I'm running my air forks at 120 pounds is all. Uh, that's a solid drop. Seven or eight feet. I will simply say the suspension is better than what I thought it would be and I think it's adequate for most. I already have a set of cone valves and a set of 6500 kit cartridge inserts and I will upgrade my suspension in the future, but this bike can still perform very well with stock suspension. 
I don't think someone should buy the bike thinking that the suspension is junk or has to immediately be changed. Yes, there's better suspension. Yes, you can upgrade. But the air fork performed very well for me. Nor did I find it overly stiff. Now for some carnage. Yes, I beat on the bike a bit. That one cost me a handguard. And on the second attempt, didn't go much better. But for good measure, we're going to do it two more times just to show it who's boss. It's about a uh, four foot step up. Doesn't look like it in the video. And then there was the doozy for the weekend. The bike has some idiosyncrasies, and it's not perfect, but this is the most stock bike I've ever ridden. I've done zero performance upgrades, aside from a couple protection items, some bibs, the bike is mostly stock. So is the bike worth upgrading to? Well, it really depends on the individual and their finances. If you have a TPI and you're happy with it, I would say don't switch. If you've been looking for a new bike for a while and have needed a good reason, this is as good as it gets. I'm convinced that TBI will be the future for two strokes, at least for the Austrian brands. Finally, if you've made it this far, thanks for your support, comment below. As for me, I'm looking forward to getting out on this bike and spending more time on it.